come back. This is lab one, introduction to AWS IAM. We will study the IAM service, which is a service enable us to create users and the group, and we assign permission and security credentials to those users, and also we control how they can access the console, whether they can access it from the management console, the web console, or from the command line interface, or the AWS CLI. Now in this lab, we are going to create the following architecture. We have a three user, user one, two, and the three, and we will assign those users to a specific group. So user one will be assigned the S3 support. And based on the permission that we have in that S3 support group, user one will be inherited an S3 read only access. User two is going to be assigned to the EC2 support and he will be assigned an EC2 read only access. Now user three is going to be assigned the EC2 if you start and stop access for the EC2. So this means user three will be able to start a new EC2 instance and stop running EC2 instance. Now this is going to be your first lab if you are doing the Cloud Foundation class in the AWS Academy. So feel free to take your time doing this lab and try to practice doing this lab many times until you really find yourself comfortable dealing with the AWS Management Console. So let us now go and look to the first task. We need to go to the IAM service, so you could go to services, and from the services you can have a list of all services that are available, or you can come to the security and identity, and you will find the IAM service is going to be sorted here as an IAM. You could add it to your favorite. If you are doing this lab from the root account, not from the academy account, you could basically create the same environment that we have in the lab sheet, and I will leave a description for it down below. So let us go to the IAM, or you can find IAM from the search bar here. Now, because this is your first lab, you will find Dealing with the management console is a little bit confusing, so don't be confused. You can search, you can go back, you can stop and start the lab at any time. You will find in this lab that we have a three users already created by the lab sheet. Now this AWS student is the current student I'm using to do this lab. So we have user one, user two, and user three. And if you go to groups, you will find also there is an S3 support, EC2 support, and EC2 admin. Let us look to the S3 support. When you go to the S3 support, there is a list of users, and you can see the group is empty at the moment because we will later on add a user to it. And there is the permission tab. Now from the permission, if you expand it from the plus sign, you will find that this user or this group is going to give you the permission Amazon S3 read-only access. Those permissions are pretty made by AWS, so they are not user defined. Effect of this policy is going to be allow S3 guest list and get and list for S3 object, which means any user we will add to this group, he's going to have a read only access and he won't be able to upload a file to the S3 bucket. Go back and see now the EC2 support group this is where we will add user to, and let us look to the permissions. And from the permission, we expand the EC2 read only access, the Amazon EC2 read only access policy. This is giving a user the allow effect to describe an EC2, to describe a load balancing, and also to describe and to list and to get the statistics of CloudWatch. So if this user is going to monitor the EC2 instance, he needs this kind of action so he can basically monitor the EC2 instance in the AWS Management Console. And he has as well the ability to view the auto-scaling group. If you go back now to the user group, there is an EC2 admin group. And in this EC2 admin group, we have EC2 admin policy, in this easy to admin policy, you can click at it here to view in the visual editor of the permission, or you could go back and view the JSON. Now in this lab, you should try to practice looking to the EC2 policy itself, because later on, when we do the Academy Cloud Architecting class, 
we are going to study more about those policies. So it's very important to start looking at them and just to feel okay reading this JSON syntax. Now in the EC2 admin policy, we have a, an effect allow to describe, to start, and to stop an EC2 instance. So any user we will add to the EC2 admin, he will be able to start and stop an EC2. So let us now add these based on the lab sheet. Let us implement what is given to us by the lab sheet. And you can look to this table here. And this table summarizes everything we need to do. So in the S3 support, we are going to select this group. And from add users, we are going to select user one. So user one, he will be able to have access to S3 read only. Now, from AC2 support group, we are going to add user, and we will add user 2. Then we go back to user groups, and from the AC2 admin group, we will select it, and then access add users, and we will select user 3. This is, will be our admin. Now, we need to test that we have assigned the correct group to each one of those users. To do that, in the dashboard, you are giving the sign-in URL for any IAM user you create using this root account. Now, you can look to this as my root account currently. So let us copy this link, and you can open it in a new window or in a, in a private session or from a different browser if you need, and then paste the link here. And this is will give you a request to fill in the username and password. Now, based on the lab sheet, user one, password is lab dash password one, and then I click on sign. Now you can see now user one is accessing the management console. Make sure to change this to the default region that we have in the AWS Academy. If you are doing this from root account again, you feel free to do it in any region because you have permission to do those. And remember that IAM is a global service. Now we need to go to S3 from this user. And we want to verify that this user can view an S3 bucket. So as you can see, there is a sample bucket here. You could try to upload if you want. You try add a file to this S3. Let us basically add this file here the upload button is going to be down below click on upload and you can see now after a while it will give me an error because i don't have permission to upload or to change the content of anything inside the s3 bucket let's go back to the ec2 now from the ec2 we want to check that this user has no permission and here i'm talking about user one he has no permission to view any running instance or to do anything inside the EC2 because he never have a permission to do so. Now we can sign out. And now with the same link, if you just copy the same link, just paste it again. Now we sign as user two. Now let us test that this user has an access to SC3 because remember user two was giving a permission to access uh, the EC2 support group so he has only permission to view uh, the ec2 and you can see it give us an error here that you don't have permission to list buckets so we can go now to test that this user can do um, anything in the ec2 console so let's go to the ec2 we can see there is two instances running and the reason why you can see this because remember you have to go to north virginia us east one and there is two lab host and bastion host let us try now to stop one of these. And as you can see, I'm giving an error, which is correct, because I never assign a permission to user two to start or to stop an EC2 instance. Let us sign out. Let us go back now to the same link that we just copied from the previous step. And now put user three and the password for the user three and then click sign. After you click sign, just put 
and access EC2 in instance. You can see now the EC2 is there. We can view them. Let us just try if we can stop an EC2. And as you can see, we are able to stop an EC2. We can also start the EC2 because basically we have permission to do so as well. Now, if you go to the SC3, you will find that this user has no permission to access the SC3 bucket and we will be giving a permission error here as you can see. So this is pretty much what you need to do in lab one. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.